Hello everybody, and welcome to the finale of Kingdom Hearts 3. The extras, the finale of Kingdom Hearts 3, and the finale of my gaming time on YouTube. Ten years has led me to this. And there's very little that we've covered, that we've not covered in the game at this point. And so, initially I hadn't been planning on showing this, but I just thought, you know what? What better way to say goodbye to this playthrough, goodbye to sort of... my gaming youtube journey is to go through the memory archive to look back at the stories that have led us to this point and and honestly this memory archive is is wonderful these videos are i think really wonderful recaps of the important points of the Kingdom Hearts franchise. They're not necessarily... they don't cover everything that you possibly need to know, but they're really good at recapping your memories, recapping the important points, mostly, that you need to know of the key events throughout the series. We can go to other and on our vessel. that's just they embark on an really, really, friends. really cool. They do seem a little different. Where are you from? And a few enemies. And ah, the boy who holds just the key. This world will be plunged Looking into back darkness. after coming this at far, it all. There's no way we're gonna let that happen. Just. Just this has been Sora just such the power of the an amazing, face -face amazing journey Riku. to go through. Like, it is I, and some I've, the seeker over the course darkness. of my time on YouTube, I have done 62 playthrough projects. Some of them are reduxes, some of them are sort of not, but so much of that has been Kingdom Hearts. I mean, it took me until uh, The took me until 2012, the aka the 10th anniversary the of the original Kingdom Hearts, to finally begin Zora, my YouTube journey with the franchise. And sort of, I remember, I, I did, sort of, I tied it all up with the 10th anniversary. Because actually, on the 10th anniversary, I did a sort of cover of Simple and Clean, which to lose and claim a new, I really liked. To claim a new, only to lose. And then, it took me a while to return back to Kingdom Hearts, but obviously I managed it with Kingdom Hearts 2, and that was a delight. But obviously, that was also a very... It was a hard playthrough for me to do that one because it was just after my. Well, it was, it was around the time that my grandfather passed away, and it was the sort of time where I really didn't know whether I could continue doing commentary and doing playthroughs because it just didn't feel like it mattered. But I knew that I wanted to keep doing it because it was something that I did love and enjoy. 
and want to share with people. Is really a manipulative witch who shackles people's hearts. And so yeah, that was. Destroy my heart. Actually, I'm pretty sure I'll always protect the you have to the introduction me. part that I did because I used to do intro videos to my playthroughs, like little weak. music videos. And that actually, I think, went up me. the day before my granddad died. So yeah, that that one holds a. Very special place for me as well because it was hard, but I made it through despite the fact that really that was when my depression really did kick into high gear, and I'm I'm very proud of myself for that. And then, obviously, we got to what has been the last age. On this play, on this channel, is when I knew that Kingdom Hearts 3 was coming. I wanted to show the story so far. I wanted to cover every single Kingdom Hearts game that I physically could. And in just over a year, so a year and a couple of months, we covered Birth by Sleep Final Mix, Rechain of Memories, in cutscene commentary form, 358 over two days in cutscene so commentary form, recoded in cutscene commentary form, Dream Drop Distance, the HD version, key back cover in cutscene commentary form, and 0.2 Birth by Steep Fragmentary Passage. And now, at last, here we are with Kingdom Hearts 3 completed, and all of the mainline games here on the channel, and that's just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing to feel that it's a franchise that I've seen through from beginning to end, and I'm so incredibly proud of that, and what I also really like is that excluding the introductions, my Kingdom Hearts 3 playthrough is exactly the same part length as my Kingdom Hearts 1 playthrough. They're both at 72 parts, and that's just a really nice sort of sense of bookending. That sort of, it just came back round on itself. Both of them and yeah, just a franchise. I, I just love the fact that I've them. had the chance to share this franchise, which her? means such a lot to me with all of you guys. That's just been a really wonderful Roxas. thing, and I've if also just really doesn't. loved going back over the fun that I've had with Kingdom Hearts 3, and sharing that joy, and everything that that has been with you as well, Agreed. and hopefully you can't turn on the organization. you've you get on their seen side, destroy you. seen where I'm coming from on That's my views true. on this game, and everything that sort of seen sort of, I suppose maybe a true fair through some of the divisiveness that What's the game has. Seeing where someone who likes the game is coming from, at the same time as seeing sort of where those flaws do come in, where those criticisms are definitely valid. And I hope that it's just been, yeah, a, a fun ride. And also, sort of, I suppose, whether it will have been or not is a different kettle of fish, but maybe a somewhat emotional ride. I'm glad. I mean, obviously, there's been things like this throughout the entire series. I mean, that that oh. <laughs> scene. And of course, Axel too. With music pour la tristesse de Shion, just killed me every time. Never forget. And that's the truth. Yeah, just the, this entire journey. But I believe there's hope for them. Has been wonderful, be and of course, the, the, while you know, I I am I am putting my foot down. I'm not returning to solo commentary after this. I'm not leaving the commentary game entirely. I'm still part of Hellfire Comms, 
not quite getting getting out of it yet. But but if that's what it takes to definitely friend, sort of in terms of doing this by myself on this channel. Riku I'm kind of Sora having to Oblivion, suspended in a deep sleep, walk down the road faced with a decision of my Your life myself now and, and that's that darkness, both terrifying and Riku, really exciting that I'm choose. closing this chapter on my life ready. and starting a brand answer. new one You're and I can't I wait to see where you that's going to take me just like I can't wait to see where the future of this franchise is going to go embraces his inner darkness and to carry it toward the light. yeah, just that whole thing of looking back over the, the entire off. franchise and suits me. my entire YouTube in career, the which I mean, I'm I'm going to do a little bit more of in my very final, it's the road to final, final, final time, video on this channel. Attacks him with a false keyblade. It just sort of Tell me first. it shows you, you just one of just us? how far sure my best friend I've sleep come. Sleep just sort of I don't know who you're supposed to how much but I've changed how much everything he sort of that organization thirteen is moved on and Roxas that's just <laughs> Sora's memories are escaping. And through Sora's nobody, I'm sure that the there'll be some people now, who uh, come and watch this particular part, part of this playthrough. No. I mean, don't. Wh who, why the hell so you would, you know, start in the extras? Why the hell you would select something that's like extras finale if you've not watched any of the others? Of you might think I'm a little bit crazy for sort of, you know, feeling can't wake up. quite emotional. You fragile, got. I suppose, at this moment friend, in time. Because I mean, as it was in the sort of last part, is that one of the every second of this video, so as it ticks down, is one second closer to if I do, saying goodbye I to this. I gave into the darkness. And, and chooses to do the same. I belong with Sora. That's just a. It, and now I, I said it in the last part. I'll say it again. It's a weird feeling. It's a really weird feeling. Riku and Roxas clash, both desperate to see And I can't believe that, yeah, it's, Why are you it, trying to it's stop me? here. Because I want back the rest of Sora's memories. I'll set Kingdom Hearts free. Then everything will be the way it was. She'll come back. And the three of I us will be together. I suppose one of the things that's probably worth pointing out at this moment, because I've still got, you know, just under ten minutes. It's a struggle. <laughs> just under ten minutes. Um, to to go way, through. I can't let you go do the... anything crazy. Another reason that the Kingdom Hearts franchise has been important to me is because it has reshaped some of my views on the types of stories that I enjoy and the types of stories I want to tell. And it's all to do with sincerity. The Kingdom Hearts franchise manages to be incredibly self-serious and incredibly goofy at the same time. See what, what, see what I did there with the pun. <laughs> um, but the reason that it manages to walk that line and be both completely ridiculous, but also so epic and heartbreaking, is because it tells its story with sincerity. Even when it's making sort of little meta jokes about itself. The entire thing just feels really sincere. The characters treat everything that happens with the weight that it requires. Who are we fighting? How did this all begin? And, and why did it take us so it's long to notice? Just such a It's a wonderful thing and sort of getting to the bottom of why I like Kingdom Hearts and why I like the sincerity allowed me to see it in the other narratives that I've enjoyed over the years. The fact that I really love Bayonetta, the wonderful 101, and what other 
things I've covered over the years. Just so many things, but time and time again, from films to books to games, it's always the stories that feel sincere that I really truly love. When they lack sincerity, they just kind of fall apart. I mean, probably a good example is looking at the narrative of Sonic Unleashed versus the story of, say, Sonic Forces. Sonic Forces does not feel sincere at all, but Sonic Unleashed does, and it works for me because of that. And obviously, ultimately, I think that the Kingdom Hearts franchise is a perfect encapsulation of how you go about doing that. Because so what are you waiting? I don't think there are any other franchises that have become the Keyblade lasted this long that have had such a well, guess what? An incredibly insane Three students of story Earth, throughout all of the games. It's yeah, it's it's ridiculous, really. And the fact that it's managed to maintain that sincerity even through moments where you probably were not thinking that uh, the team at Square Enix were being that sincere, you know, with the the not delivering on Kingdom Hearts three, uh, the general. Why are they putting a new game out on a completely different console that nobody's going to play? That most people didn't play and then everyone got confused. <laughs> it all sort of... It all came back together. And that's awesome. And even though the story has its kind of flaws and its faults and so does the gameplay, it's still uh, such a fun uh, franchise to play, to experience, even as you know what he's like dying at this moment in this uh, particular memory of the archive, but it's just awesome, and, and I love it, by the time he and I always will. Terra was going by a different name. Master Xehanort's second attempt to start the Keyblade War involved pitting seven pure lights against thirteen darknesses. His heart and body acted separately. And his heart and I suppose manipulated while this final memory is quite dark. I mean, his name is Darkness. It's pretty obvious, and it goes through all of Xehanort's plan and how he went about it and all of that jazz. But his it, plans were dashed by Sora and his friends. I think it, it's good that, in a way, Light. But we appreciate the darkness that has sort of permeated the franchise. In a way, I mean, it makes sense. Is to divide like, look at those sort of yeah, the, the, those darker vessels. moments of our past because. It allows us to see when the light has been good, when we've had sort of that light and that enjoyment and that wonder. The shadow makes the light brighter, which I know is not exactly how it's not how it scientifically works, but it does. And when the good sort of outweighs the bad for someone, that's when it it becomes special when you're willing to forgive things forgive flaws and faults because you love something that much that's the hallmark of a, a good franchise I feel obviously the best franchises are those that don't make those mistakes but everything has its, has its own flaws so uh, still but um as it says there, the end is near. Obviously, we've seen how that story ends, how the uh, Xehanort saga comes to its conclusion. But obviously, I couldn't finish this playthrough on uh, that note. 
So, we're going to end it on uh, the only real note that I feel that we could. The secret ending of Kingdom Hearts 3 in all its shocking and crazy wonder. Because... At the end of the day, I think this is basically how I'm going to feel tomorrow when I sort of wake up and realise that this is all over. It'll definitely be sort of how I'm feeling when I've recorded my final video. That Oh, God. It's... It, it's it's going to be a very weird time for me. But... As we end our time with this fantasy, as this playthrough finally comes to an end, I just want to say thank you all so, so, so much for everything, for your support over the years, if you've watched me over the years, for your support during this game, if you've just watched this game. I hope you've enjoyed it, I hope you found it interesting, I hope you found it informative, and... I hope, I just, I, I wish you all the very best. You're all amazing, you're all important, you all matter, and I cannot thank you all enough. Reconnect Kingdom Hearts. Thank you.